Hello and welcome to another episode of The Circularists and I'm delighted to be speaking with Michael Rada. So uh, Michael Rada is on a mission to create a world that is wasteless. Michael, welcome. It's great to have you on. Thank you for joining me. Um, Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So I will hand you the floor. Can you tell the, 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 the viewers what your backstory is, what you're working on, what the vision is? Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. I saw some of your interviews and I really like it by the way how you speak with the with the guests and so on. So spreading the knowledge and experience. So for me, it's not a long story. Generally, I started my career in 1919 as a steel factory worker. So I do not have any academic education. But I let's say I went through the through the life and the work and ended up as a member of the board of the second largest Japanese corporation of the logistic division in a Europe 23 years later. Mm-hmm. And it was quite interesting because I spent a lot of my life with logistics, uh, not only with the international trade business and so on. So I have a very rich experience. But then I realized one day that there is something wrong because I find out after one successful project that there is no one in the world, and it was 2010, who prevent waste happen on, on industrial scale. And it was so strange to me that I started. You know, first of all, I was thinking that the waste industry should take care, but I have learned that the aim of waste industry is very different. So they manage waste. They do not try to prevent the waste happen. Because if they manage waste, and if there is more waste, they are more profitable. This is how they grow up to the third most profitable industry in the world. So, did, you say third, did you say third most profitable industry in the world? Yeah. Waste. When I started, so 10 years ago, there has been fifth. And in just five years, they skip over drugs. So they are more profitable than drugs, and they are more profitable than slavery. So right now, the most profitable industry in the world is war industry. The second more profitable is crude oil industry. Mm -hmm. And the third one is waste industry. And you know, because the crude oil industry, it's in such a trouble. It looks like if we do not change our behavior, it looks like that there will be war and waste. Mm. One generate the other and the other generate the one, Mm. you know? If we do not change, and I am happy that the the direction is changing and my work contribute to that, we will live on a global landfill. But in 2013, I decided not to. So I leave the corporation. Mm -hmm. I went back to my boiler suit, same as generally 23 years ago as I started in a steel factory. Mm -hmm. And I started in a boiler suit to work with the workers. Uh, to really change the world. And it works. You know, at the time, I call it industrial upcycling. But then, one year later, my clients from factories came to me, the general managers generally came to me and say, Mr. Rada, but that's not a methodology anymore. You created a new industry. So I sit down and spend some time. And because I know about the industrial revolutions and so on, I I decided to call it Industry 5.0. But... Instead of a revolution, I decided to build it as evolution because there is only one role model of Industry 5.0. And that's, I have a question for you. From the very beginning, from 2013, there is only one role model for my work and for Industry 5.0. Do you know what or who it is? So you work in waste. There's one role model. Is it a human or is it a creature? Mm. None of those, I will say. Is it the is planet? It, is it nature? Yes. yes. You, are, you are one of very few people in the world. And I ask this question hundreds of thousands of people already. And you are really very few of them came to that fact that it's nature. You know, there's a lot of reasons. Nature does not waste. Yes. Nature oh, does not yes. Yes. Nature does not need business plans to deliver the results. And, and, and there is so much. Yes. yes. So for me, nature was from the very beginning the role model. Wonderful. And 
it was so interesting because I am a systematic guy. So from the logistic, I have learned a lot of about systems and so on about global supply chain. I do specialize myself in the time of logistic. I specialize myself in global supply chain, innovations, uh, packaging design generally, returnable especially, and sustainability. And I am even educating on a logistic academy. Uh, and uh, this is why uh, logistics helps me a lot of in my work. And yeah. You know, gosh, there's so much that I want to talk to you about. Everything's just going off in my head like fireworks. You know, the fact that you're into systems, that you're inspired by the circularity of nature. These are things that I think about all the time, which is probably why I was able to answer that, because I've already got that in my mind. Um, nature is our best teacher. It ha it's full of circular systems. There are people working on new textiles and um, products that, that, that incorporate something called biomimicry, which I'm sure you know you, you I do talk in the same language, right? Um, so, so this this com this continual looking to nature to inspire and to inform how we build. Um, so, can I ask you? I've got some questions I'd love to ask you about your work. So, uh, a wasteless world. You're focused on industry and turning its waste into what? Uh... Let me explain before answering this question, let me explain to you and to everyone that uh, when I speak or somebody in Industry 5.0 speak about waste, we do not speak only about the physical waste. We have five times types of waste which we recognize. The first one is the physical, this is the trash which we throw away. But the second one is social waste. Which social are people, waste. Yes, which are people and even animals who cannot live meaningful life. The oh. third one is urban waste, urban waste, which are empty buildings, factories where the cities are filled with people, with the homeless people, for example. Urban the fourth waste. One mm -hmm. is a process waste. And process waste, you know very well in the industries from lean. Do you know, for example, that there are uh, how many percent of containers, the, the shipping containers, which carry the cargo? Do you know how many are empty? going all around the globe carrying just the car just the air inside i think i read this on your website it's horrific is it 80 percent 55 55 out 55 everything. percent we are carrying just the air inside the last waste we added last year and this is the wasting of time Many people don't know what is waste it's quite interesting if uh, i will ask you to finish following sentence I put in the garbage what I do not use. For example, or need, or so they are. So usually there are, in the countries, there are three definitions of waste. I will tell you two. What you just said was generally one of the definition because in the law is stated, uh, waste is something which you would like to get rid of. Okay. This is really a definition in a law. Right. We, Nothing more, just this sentence, which if my wife would like to get rid of me and divorce, I will become waste. No, no, that's not generally, that's not joke. This is really according to the law, it will be like that. And the law does not solve if the thing which you would like to get rid of is new, usable, uh, living. No, it become waste. The laws are written by waste industry. You know, the intention of waste industry is to have as much waste as possible. But I will tell you a second definition of waste, which is better. Waste is something which you place on a location dedicated to waste storage. For example, in a garbage bin. And just now I will show you something with my business card. Imagine we are in one room, okay? So I am old schooler. I am used to give you my business card. I hand it over to you. You take it. Everything is fine. But just now, please erase this memory. We never met before. And we are coming to each other. And in the middle... It's completely new stainless steel garbage bin. I come to you, I stretch the business card, I fall down and the business card fall in the, in the garbage bin. But you would like to have it for whatever reason. We look inside the garbage bin, there is nothing. It's completely new stainless steel shiny, just one business card. And you said to me, Michael, I will take the business card. So I will apologize. I take it out of the garbage bin, I check it. 
I apologize with you again. I hand it over to you. If you take it from me at this moment, you take with this with it the right for a penalty of 200,000 euro. It will be the most expensive business card in your life. Do you know why? No, why? Because the business card become waste and you have no right to war with waste. Because I have, only no, right to, I have no right to, to what? To manage waste. You have oh, no right to oh, manage waste. Oh, really? You have to have a you have to have an approval to manage a waste. Uh, which, country, uh, which countries are we talking about? I am speaking about Czech Republic, I, but I know exactly the same is in the UK. It, the same is in India, China. Generally, ninety nine percent of countries in the world who have some waste legislation work with the same principles. So, yes. Imagine that this is the edge of the garbage bin, okay? And here's yeah. the business card. So right now I will show you what's happening. Here is a business card. Here is a business card. Here is waste. You see uh, nothing uh, happened uh, with the business card. But this is how the legislation is written. Right. So here it is It is generally your profit because it, it has a value. Here is your cost right. and the profit of waste industry. How you prevent the waste to happen? You just catch in the middle air. You don't let the product go over this edge. Right. And this is how you prevent the waste to happen. So this is just for explanation. It's a very sure. simple thing. Sure. But the people don't know about it. So, so, so Michael Rada, um, your focus at the moment is on industrial waste. Your vision is a wasteless world. Can you tell? Can you tell us? What are you doing with it? What is industrial waste or the industrial waste you work with? And what are you doing with it? What do you turn it into? I do prevent waste in, in five categories, which has been explained before. Mm -hmm. So if we find out somewhere a waste produced by industries, it does not mean that it must be generally a broken product. It can be just a product which does not fit the industrial standards. Right. Uh, it, and the second thing is, there is all the time a huge quantity of the waste. And I just prepared some interesting things. Two construction materials, you see. This one is made in India. And it's really a construction material made of dangerous waste from Indian hospital. Okay. And it's made, uh, and, and it's, it's certified construction material. This one is made of Tetra Pak packaging combined with single-use plastics. Oh. In Czech Republic, again, construction material. Both produced by the same technology, so-called heat compression technology. Mm. So if there is, if there are companies who produce a lot of waste, they can, for example, use similar technology to produce a product out of it. But can I, I have, can yes? I, can I ask, so who's using that? Those those um, construction materials you just showed me, who's using those and what for? Uh, so in India, they are used for light construction buildings, so sanitary buildings and so on for roofs, even for the floor of buses, for example, because it's a very durable material right. and for production of furniture. So we can imagine that someone like Ikea is using that as the basic material for the production of, of furniture. In Europe, it's starting generally. The production is here already. The, uh, the producer of the technology which can make it is in Czech Republic. And mm -hmm. the company is using instead of plasteboard. So they use it for a standard construction for dividers in, uh, in the rooms and so on. Right. So it become one of the standards of a construction industry. What is interesting, it can be half thick and it has the same, same strength as the plasteboard. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to, there's something that I've been thinking about for a while and you, it sounds as if you can answer this for me. So we, you know, our oceans are full of plastics, waste plastic, and they're being dredged all the time around the world, huge quantities. And I often wondered to myself, could that plastic be compressed into bricks for construction? Yes. <laughs> There can be some exceptions, of course, but generally the answer is yes. You know, plastic, most of the plastic, so the crude oil made plastic, let's say, because they are under types, but the crude oil made, made plastic, there is nothing wrong about the plastic. Plastic itself is just another form of a, 
of crude oil. It's like yeah. ice and water. Right. One is and the second is hard. But right, yeah. for more than 60 years exists a methodology which can turn the hard part, so the plastic, into a crude oil again. It's called pyrolyze. It's the issue why pyro pyrolyze. So okay. uh, I can write it down after. So sure, sure. And generally, uh, it is so efficient already. Then last year there has been tests in my country, and there they has been able to turn uh, one he one key one hundred kilo of plastic into nine ninety eight liters of crude oil. Can you say those numbers again? One hundred kilo into 98 liters okay which is unbelievable you know so you may ask why it's not used already because yeah. it exists yeah the answer is simple crude oil industry lobby which does not want to have another source of crude oil oh. and the waste industry lobby which does not want to have they would like to have it as a waste not as as, as a product and they are one of three most profitable industries in the world. So it's easy because they influence the government. I will show you one more product before you ask your question. This beautiful fashion accessory, just a question. What do you think it's made from? Aluminium foil. You are close, but there was a product which contains this foil. So this is use bags of potato chips. Ah, really? Turned, turned into such a beautiful piece of, wow. this is a fashion accessory. Mm. It was done, it's, and the methodology is 400 years old, it's origami. Uh, and oh, it, is that origami? Yes, it's, it's origami style generally. It's with new materials because the Japanese at the time did not have aluminum, of course. Yeah. What is interesting, it's not just nice, but generally it has an additional function which we did not know about. This is that if you if you bend it and you make the basic structure, mm -hmm. there are 14 layers of aluminum. These 14 layers are so-called RFID blockers. So if you put your payment card, the, the wireless payment card inside, no yes. scammer will be able to read it. So nobody will be able to steal your data because, because? it's general. Um, they are machines. If you are up, up paying wirelessly with your card, the technology is RFID. So yes. this is the yeah. And this is RFID blocker. Oh. So if you put your, and it was generally, it was interesting because we find out it was, it was coincidence how we find out that oh, it is, is a blocker. How so, interesting. That could be is, interesting. You, you can do, you know, I would like to welcome you to my office because here in this office in Czech Republic, every single piece of, of furniture, in, except of my chair, is made from obsolete products from factories. Oh, every oh, single oh. one. You will sit on it. You will eat it. You will, even these pictures here they are made from real vinyl records from the biggest producer of the world you know they throw away every single day up to ten thousand vinyl records well, even because of, yes because of the sound quality oh because sound quality is for the producer of vinyl records the only criteria or yes. the main criteria right and so what are those things on the wall are they is it art wall art uh, generally, I have a I have a creator who cut it by hand. You send him a photograph, and he take a real vinyl record, which is generally in some way broken, and cut it away. It's three to six hour work. Right. What is interesting, if you put LED light on it, yeah, the shadow which is project can be up to six meter high. Oh. I can tell you there. If you let someone such a present. And for example, there is someone who left already. You know, here is, for example, the first Czech president who, who created my country in 1918. So, and, and, you know, if you give someone uh, such a present and you project it, there is no emotion. That I haven't seen more, more emotional reaction to, to a present. Because at that moment, the person is with you. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, far more shadow. It's yeah. it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, amazing. So, um, returning to um, waste and repurposing, these are some fantastic examples. And all too often, when an innovation emerges, it's often the large money interests that block it because we've got these high walls that exist across all industries. It's in fashion, it's the oil industry, the lobbies, it's everywhere. And now we're hearing it's in waste. What's the way around over or behind these walls? It's very simple. It's It sounds strange, but it is really very so simple. First of all, you have to understand that everybody can prevent waste to happen. Everyone, from the moment when they will listen to this to this recording, they will learn that they can prevent waste happen. So oh. for everyone who is creating or living from the waste, it's very difficult. How there exists a methodology called 6R generally, which explain that firstly, you have to recognize that something must not become waste. Then you reconsider what to do with it and you realize it. So simply it is. And what is the most important part? You know, for 10 years, I'm asking the CEOs and owners of companies only one question. One question only, no more. Because not a single company joined me and in Industry 5.0 because of sustainability. This is written in an annual report, but that's okay. It, it, it has nothing to do with reality. So, and this question is flowing. Do you prefer to generate waste or profit? There is nothing in between. You can do one or the other because waste all the time will be for you cost. But if you cut the cost away, you increase your profit. Yeah. So simply, yes. you know, every single of these big players join me because they would like to be more profitable. And at the, at the same time, they are more environmental friendly. You know, for example, for me, one example, I've been asking, asked many times if I can reduce the or make the calculation for carbon emission trading. I refuse to do that because this is the biggest crime against the planet which was ever launched. Right. It has nothing to do, it does not stop the pollution. Mm. In fact, it turns it into money and the money does not end up where it should. So, but unfortunately not a single lawyer in the world is ready to stand next to me, face United Nations, all government of the world, because they are supporting this crime, you know? so. But with waste, and the crime it is, is and just to, just to explain the crime. The crime is what exactly? The crime is the fact that you prepay doing evil. Generally, you do not reduce your smoke from a chimney. You pay some country in Africa or South America or Southeast Asia. You pay them virtually that you keep your smoke in your chimney, and they will cut something on on their side. But it does not work. So it's, you know, it's, that's a bit like saying, that's a bit like me saying, I'm on a, I'm on a diet to reduce my calorie intake, but I'm going to pay you not to eat cakes. So yes. I can eat cakes, but by you not eating cakes, it reduces my intake, which is nonsense, right? Which generally in the numbers, if you put it in a numbers, similar system like uh, the system for watching the carbon emission, it will looks like that you are losing weight. Right. Because because right. the weight is being lost somewhere, exactly just not somewhere. from me. Right. So it's and an accounting it. it's Generally, it's a new economical system, which, uh, it's, which is used for money laundering. So yeah. it's generally, and the billions of their spent you know what is interesting that at the end of last year, the first organization within within United Nations says that they will not uh, take into account the carbon emission credits anymore. And I don't know whether you know from your education, I don't know uh, from your school, in Middle Ages in Europe was something called indulgences. Have you learned about those? No. Uh, it was the king when he was he went and the readers and the knights when they went to the war. They pay to churches so-called indulgences, so they can kill anyone they want, and they will still go to the uh, to the to the to heaven. Family. So to they the hmm? you so they prepay pay. you prepay for doing evil, oh. and that's exactly this. Right, the sickness of humanity. 
or the vanity of humanity, whichever way you want to look at this. So, um, okay, so I have some questions. So this effort, so, so this conversion of waste to resource, are you overseeing that? Who's doing this? Who's, who's making these products that you've just shown? Uh, the products are doing various companies, businesses, entrepreneurs, and okay. I am helping them generally to find oh, the solution right. uh, because if they become a part of Industry 5.0, so you know, it's important to say that we do not accept in Industry 5.0 nothing which does not exist. Okay. Just as a dream or we have a plan to do something. No, it must exist. Right, right now, for example, these days, 20 years, uh, a man in Australia called Robert Tongs developed this pyrolyzed methodology, which I mentioned to turn uh, other waste into biochar. Mm -hmm. And he he turned it, he does not use uh, flame or uh, fire, but he used overheated steam instead. And it's it's a new, a new technology. He developed it for 20 years. And just now the very first in the world machine is being implemented immediately. And so this become part of industry 5.0. If there will be something like we will do, uh, like the carbon, uh, direct carbon capture, that you go to the air and you catch yeah, yeah, the yeah. carbon. Yeah. They are generally, most of them are fakes. You know, they are strongly invested, but they are fake. Hyperloop by Elon Musk. Hyperloop by Elon Musk was something which, you know, more than 100 governments of the world sign up for Hyperloop in their country. Not a single one exists, right. and they don't care. Elon Musk sold it to Richard Branson, and Richard Branson just leave it away. So millions and billions spent for nothing. Right. Um, there was something I wanted to ask you there. Um, oh, yes. OK, so um, <laughs> so you have you so you've described your early years. You went to work at 18, you worked in the steel industry, then you worked in um, manufacturing and in, in waste systems for large corporations. Oh. And you say that you've lectured in over 500 establishments. Is that? Yeah, universities, mainly universities, universities. but uh, there has been much more companies. So, and right. what is important, I never work in a waste industry, never ever. I work in logistics, wow. I work ah, in trade, in fashion. Right. Right. Never right. okay. in waste. Okay. Never in waste. Okay. So you haven't gone, you didn't go the academic route, so you didn't uh, attain a degree, but you lecture in hundreds of universities. Yes. What, what, what is your view of academia from, the, from that perspective? You know, there is, uh, before answering this, one information. Every day I receive one to three emails from Academia Edu, which is uh, one of the publication centers for research papers. Mm -hmm. That someone in the world use my name, refer to my name or my work. I am not a researcher. I am not academician. I am not scientist. And these people refer to my work. So when I lecture in in schools, colleges, or universities, there is a big issue. And this big issue is that generally the system is old and does not update according to the needs. There is one man or woman standing in front of 30 people delivering something. Right. The people should reply or not reply, generally uh, say the same when they are asked. So it's 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 like yeah. it's a it's a very passive way of delivering something. Right. I want to ask you something there. So what you're describing, and this is what interests me about talking to you, you're describing this very passive way of receiving old knowledge. Yes. Not, not new ideas, but received wisdom that's old, right? I want to ask you a question. Do you think that the current paralysis around the world to innovate and outthink this climate emergency has its roots in the creativity that has been stymied and suppressed out of 
children's minds through the education system that you, we have that you just described. So if I put that another way, do you think that having reared a whole generation of professionals in the world today who have gone through the education system not having free reign on their creative thinking, do you think that's part of the reason why we're stuck? Yes. Yes, and the answer is yes, but there is something which maybe will be confusing. You know, in Industry 5.0, we go back to roots. So Meaning? Germany, what does that back mean? Back to roots. Back to roots mean, uh, when I speak, for example, to people in India, I tell them, don't look to Europe or America. You, in your history, you have built oh. such a beautiful cities and so on, uh churches or whatever mm -hmm. they build it and it's held for 2000 years right they are much more older so you know in in our roots in the in in the history i'm sitting right now in a in a building which was built 1889 right and it's still here we are working here so there is nothing wrong about the old things mm -hmm. but we lost and maybe this will be the answer to you we are losing in education, we are you losing the curiosity and creativity. Mm. And this is what we are losing. And this is the wrong part about, because we are not allowed to speak. We are just allowed to speak when somebody asks us. Right. We, the right answer is the answer which I have heard before, so I should repeat it only. Right. There is no thinking. Uh, right. No. Another question for you. Do you, would you agree with me that to an extent academic achievements and awards from institutions have become a proxy for intelligence what what i mean is i have certificates and degrees and accolades therefore i'm intelligent do you think that's where we're at unfortunately the society is built on that and the answer is yes. And from my perspective, is wrong because it has nothing to do with the reality, usually. Mm -hmm. And there are some destinations, some countries where the people collect certificates and diplomas and uh, uh, after every webinar, you receive one and so on. And if they look a job, so the HR men or women just look how many are there. They are even not reading it. They are just looking how th thin or thick is the, is the folder. And right. that's the the only criteria you know uh there is a very strange thing i changed eight years ago i changed the title on my business card and there is only one word oh, was, human. <laughs> love it <laughs> and you know a lot of organizers of events and in the universities they have a big problem with it because they expect i i will be engineer doctor whatever right Right. And they are struggling that I have only human there. Right. Right. So we have through the education, or let's say the education is helping us to lose the humanity and become just a component of the system. Right. Because the system, they do not want to have free thinking people. They would like to have a component of a system right. which they can take, use, throw away as a waste, take, right. use, throw away. Is the system. And it is wrong. And look where that system has got us. Exactly. This is uh, not to dis education. This is not a sort of anti education, but we do have to recognize this is a time for creativity that cannot be necessarily taught in the way that rote learning has, has, has been proposed. Uh, I started just recently, I started a, a special. It's not a podcast. I'm speaking with some with some people. I'm having some guests. And it's called About Nothing. Just about nothing. So I will welcome you to talk about nothing. <laughs> and you know, uh, it's quite interesting because when I ask them whether they would like or, or whether they will favor to introduce one day in a week in a school to be about nothing, teachers will not be prepared. Students will not be prepared. They will be on the same line. Okay. And that will be the day which which will change the education system. Yeah. Because yeah. they will narrow, we will narrow the one, the small ones and the big ones. Yeah. The one, they will have the same. Right. All this 
they are in Czech language, you know, but all of them are right. great. No matter to whom I speak, it's so creative. And I like not to prepare myself. So I really love this way which we are having right now because it's about the way how we start to use our brain. And unfortunately, yeah. with the implementation of AI, ChatGPT, and so on. Mm -hmm. So Industry 4.0 should take our work away, the hard work, so the robots will take over. European Commission says, and they still uh, are the term Industry 5.0, and they deliver the fake. They use it for delivery fake, but they say generally artificial intelligence will take away our thinking. Yes, I feel what this. Yes, I feel this. It's. I think that's right. Um, I want to. So there are two periods in history that I look to, and I think there are so many lessons we can draw from this. So I'm, I'd like to know your thoughts on this. So the first period in history is the Renaissance in Italy, in the 14th century, where you had a breaking down of divisions between carpenters and iron workers and woodworkers and poets and sculptors, everyone was in the square, exchanging, creating, and it happened over hundreds of years, but you had this uh, release of newness, creativity, right? And I think about the time we live in now as the Renaissance 2.0, because we need a similar breaking down of the walls that divide disciplines so that we can mash it all together to create new. Your expression tells me you really get that. Uh, I get it. Generally, uh, the European Commission is trying to introduce something which is called New European Bauhaus. And the Bauhaus, some take the Bauhaus as a new renaissance, generally, from the 19th oh, century. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they use this term. It was written by some, some academician. When was but that written? Uh, 2021, I think. I Maybe I will find... Uh, but, but if you put if you input in Google New European Bauhaus... Yes. For sure, you will get you will get okay. the Oh, well, this is reassuring. So the second period in time that I think about is um, in the Second World War in, in the UK, there was a, a hub, a secret hub at Bletchley Park. And in, in that hub, they were cracking the Enigma code, mm -hmm. the German Enigma code. And, you know, everything... It's a bit like now, the whole world kind of depended on the cracking of this code. So what what happened there? They didn't go to the universities and say, show me what grades people have got and get them in. They didn't do that. They did something very different. They put an ad into the paper and said, do you like crosswords? Are you geeky? Do you, do you spot patterns in things? And they pulled out this profile, the cognitive profile, of the people who could crack this code. And I look at the Renaissance and I look at Bletchley Park and I think, surely that's what we need to be doing right now. Uh, great stories, I do fully agree. Two informations, one, do you know when the word robot was introduced? Do I know what, sorry? When the word robot was introduced and where? You're gonna, are you going to tell me it was at Bletchley Park? No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 1921, in Czech Republic, 75 kilometers from place where I'm sitting, was a man which is was was an author. Author, he write books and screenplays, and he published a, a screenplay called R U R. I will send you the uh, BBC make out of it great radio play. Oh, please. and really well, they make really well. Uh, and this man named Karel Čapek, and he wrote a lot of very strong books. Uh, he said in his books, generally, if the humans will be addicted to technology, there will be no humans anymore because the, the technology does not need humans. Mm -hmm. And you know, the system does not need brains, does not need people thinking. Right. And the second a second about enigma i will show you what i have on my door don't worry there is no enigma and no <laughs> code but there is one image if you have the, if you have the number 5.0 and i ask you how will you go from 0 to 5 
you probably do following. One, two, three, four, five. Am I right? Um, I would have to think about it. Yeah, probably, I guess. And my question is, why don't you make just one step back? <laughs> and this is exactly, I said, if you, if you, I speak about myself that I am crazy guy. I'm lunatic. I, I don't say I am ill, you know, it's not about my brain. I have a special thing with my brain, but it's, it has nothing to do with it. And, you know, the people like Michelangelo, the people like this, they are the crazy guys. And only the crazy guys change the world. Yes. Because they don't yeah. care about the existing things. You know, I make a quite interesting project, which may be interesting for you. You know Enel Company? Which e company? E-N-E-L, Enel? No. It's, it's, I think, the second largest uh, uh, electric grid companies in the world. Right. And, and they have a challenge, so they call sustainability challenge. And we can pick whatever we want, and we just do. And I was on the right on my electric unicycle, and I just saw the, the electric towers in the field. Mm -hmm. You know, they are everywhere. Yeah. And I look at them. And you know what I have found? These structures, which are billions all over the globe, they are having just one function, to carry, a, to carry the wires from a power station to your home. Yes. And I said to me, that's wrong. Because generally, single use for me, it's a very... Has a yes. Learning. Yes. So... I went back to my office and there exists a uh, wind power. If, he, if I speak about wind power, you imagine a big blade which turned this way. Is it so? Yeah. But there exists a blade which turn this way. Oh, yes, I've seen them. Yes. They are called horizontal wind, wind, wind power. And, you know, I take the idea. I take, I, I get in touch with the producer of the horizontal wind towers. I make a calculation how many electric towers are in the world, and the biggest is two meters lower than the Eiffel Tower, just for your image. And I make a calculation. If we put in every 100 electric tower, one kilowatt, which is the smallest one generally, one kilowatt uh, power station, we will be able to generate so much power, like 26 nuclear power stations. Mm with the price of one. And this is, I take something which is existing, a second thing which is existing, and I combine it in a non-existing way. This is what innovation is all about. That's what it's about. Novel, yes. novel ways uh, using existing resources, yes. Because you use a thing which is existing, and, yes. and this is great because you can use it right now, right here. Mm. And then... You combine it or you use it a different way. And yeah. that's exactly the way how, how I work. We have just a few minutes left on this call, but I would love to have a follow-up call with you. I think we should have a mad inventor session where we can just talk about our ideas because I've got so many. And I think we should literally have a, have a firing off session and uh, see, what, see what comes out. I am for that because, you know, as I said at the beginning, it is important to share the ideas. Yes. It is important because it's not only us. They are, everybody generally in his world or her world has such a great ideas. Yes. But they shame to share because it can be stupid or uh, they have no, no possibility to speak and so on. But I am trying to wake up these people, you know, and this is why I started industry 5.0 and, and changing the world from wasteful to wasteless because you know in the school you have learned that there was an ice age we are living right now in a waste age mm, yes because so yes. much is being wasted you know mm. i was in a factory uh it was the second largest distributor of fruits and vegetables in my country every single month he wasted 400 metric tons in single warehouse. They, he has five every month. And I was standing there, and there came a truck which was refused by Tesco buyer. And it was full with, with reddish, full. The refusal reason was 
that the leaves of the radish, which we do not eat at all, are not green enough. And you know what happened? They just throw away every single crate, full truck in a garbage bin. I was standing there and, and crying. I don't shame for my tears. Mm -hmm. But you know, one year later, instead of 400 tons, we reduced to 10 tons. And we are going to reduce to zero. Because it's just about different approach. Yes. And if, if you learn that in the world, 75% of all the food and crop we, weigh, we produce is being wasted before second stage of production. 75 of everything. Then it's the obscene. It's obscene and ridiculous that we, uh, as humanity, live like this. It's so dumb. I mean, there's no intelligence in, in this. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. when I talk to United Nations, when they ask for a solution, I told them 10 years ago, they are blocking me. Instead of supporting, I am banned on COP28, COP27, COP26, and banned. Everything related to industry, try to input it in Wikipedia. You will find not a single term about Industry 5.0. You will find not a single except of one reference about my Corada. Everything is immediately deleted. Greenpeace don't like me. Circular economy experts, unfortunately, don't like me. You Why? Know, because Why don't they like you? I can send you the article about it, but generally I said that you can deliver the change without asking other people money. That's one thing. The second thing is, you know, it's, Circular economy is six, no, 55 years old because it was introduced, I think, 1960, whatever. And, but there is no circular business. Why? Because it's concentrating a lot of on the economical part, on the money part. Mm -hmm. And the second is, if you look at the circle, all the time is there waste reported as a resource. But it's not right. If for somebody waste will be resource, he or she will try to have more waste because they will have more money. And unfortunately, in nature, there is not waste because, and even no circularity in, in a way how we do understand. You know, we buy a bottle, we crash the bottle, we make new bottle. But nature will not do that. Nature does not care whether out of the apple which will fall out of the tree, whether somebody will eat it or whether it turn into soil, because it's the complexity. This is the mm -hmm. lack of silos in nature. Right. And this is yes. exactly what is missing. Right. And this is right. exactly what you mentioned in the Renaissance. They break the silos. Right. And one moment they break the silos. Let's work together. Right. And it's not about capitalism or socialism. No. Or communism. No, it's really about the will to change. And I, I am sure that before you ask someone to change, you will be the first who will change. Mm. And I do exactly the same. I am the first in a boiler suit who work with the workers in a factory ground. Yeah. The managers pay my salary, and it's I am not cheap guy, but uh, I am work with the workers. You no, know, because it is so important. Michael Rada. This has been an absolutely fascinating conversation. I look forward to getting on another call with you so that we can invent stuff and talk more. <laughs> can we finish this one minute with this sign? This sign means not I am number one or you. This sign means we follow one aim and this is to build wasteless world. And I will make a screenshot, smile please. And I will share it as our screenshot, as our talk. And I'm looking forward to the next conversation because you know have a nice time free of waste and wasting in all its forms stay safe free and please be visible as you are because you are the role model thanks a lot thank you so much bye-bye bye-bye